What happened to Tony Morris? That has been the big question surrounding the ex-Jehovah's Witness community over the last few months. And people have, every single video that I upload, people are asking, what happened to Tony Morris? Have you heard anything about it? And I'm just like, I don't know. Watchtower is just giving us crickets. He disappeared like a fart in the wind and we have no idea what happened. And there are some people who have been pretty critical of just the speculation surrounding it, but I think we should direct that criticism at Watchtower because for them not telling us, it kind of opens the door to speculation. What happened? Why not have a little bit of fun and theory craft, make jokes about it or what have you? I'm all about that sort of thing. But now we have a little bit more of, uh, of the puzzle. We have a few more pieces that have been added to help frame our speculation around. So in the May JW broadcasting, there was a video, uh, a morning worship as there normally is, and it was done by Stephen Lett. But apparently from Bethel Insiders, we uh, have just recently found out today that Tony Morris was actually supposed to give this talk that we're going to be watching during that broadcast, but it was pulled by Watchtower leaders. And as we know, all of his um, morning worship talks were actually pulled from JW.org as well. So it adds a little bit more curiosity, like, okay, we can officially say that there, he did not leave for health reasons. He didn't just walk away from it. There had to be more going on. Do we know the full story? No. Do Bethelites really know the full story? No, because we would have already found out exactly what happened by now. So it's really a very, very, very small amount of people that know the truth behind this. But I do find it fascinating to try and put together the pieces as we get more information. So with him being removed or his morning worship talks being removed, and then from him also being removed from the May JW broadcasting, I think we can officially say now that there was a problem as far as theologic, philosophic, whatever the case might be, there was a butting of heads between him and other members of the governing body. And he probably, I, this is just me speculating again, but probably was removed for that reason. I don't think it was a moral thing, maybe not something that he did himself, but maybe he just had a disagreement. And now that they institute or brought in two new members of the for the governing body, they had a two thirds vote so they could remove remove him. I think that's why they brought in the new members. It wasn't because they needed new fresh faces to the governing body. I think the reason they brought in the two new members was so that way they could remove Tony Morris. But anyway, with all of that being said, let's take a look at this video that has now been leaked because it is kind of interesting for a lot of different ways. So yeah, I'm excited about it. I hope you're excited about it. Don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. With all that being said, let's do this. Now, this morning, I thought we'd talk about the theme, uh, Beware of Satan's Temptation to Make You Smoke. Now, some might be thinking of cigarettes, cigars, pipes. No, we're talking about the way Satan himself smoked many years ago. Now, literally in the Greek, puffed up with pride is be made to smoke. So... The point there being that if, if you're made to smoke, you're wrapped in smoke. Now, if I was sitting here wrapped in smoke, I couldn't see myself clearly, and you couldn't see others clearly because you're wrapped in smoke, see? I am going to come out with a hot take here that I myself didn't even expect. Uh, for all of the criticism that I've had for Tony Morris uh, since I've had this channel over the last two plus years, I miss him. There is something authentic about the way he talks. He feels 
it, it feels when you're watching him that he believes it. And not only on the JW Broadcasting, but even in person. I think I've heard him give three or four talks now. And even in person, you just get the sense and the feeling. Like, he's not these robotic speak in the exact same way. That is very exciting news for the organization. We are so happy to be part of God. Like, he doesn't talk in that way that's so frustrating and annoying. And I don't know if I have that opinion because I've been watching so much of the convention recently. And now that I see Tony again and he's coming at us with this authenticity, it's kind of refreshing. But I miss him. I miss Tony Morris. So hashtag bring Tony back. <laughs> Who would have ever thought that, that in 2023, we would be wishing that Tony Morris came back to the governing body because he does bring that authenticity. He does really believe it. And when they do believe it and when they, you know, turn on the camera and start talking and they truly genuinely believe it, it exposes them even more. I did a governing body tier list a couple of years ago and he was, you know, an S tier because of that the same reason. If you have someone that truly believes this nonsense, it is way more entertaining and funny and it seems less manipulative. You can laugh at it more and be shocked or scared by it slightly less. But anyway, we are going to be talking about smoke and how pride is smoke and some other nonsense. But uh, yeah, he does have something in this talk that really blew my mind. So yeah, let's get into it. So to be wrapped in smoke, puffed up with pride is offensive to Jehovah God. And one reference made this interesting observation. Such a man, quote, is blind with pride or conceit. They are beclouded and stupid in, excuse me, in a beclouded and stupid state of mind as the result of pride. Now, if you go back to 1 Timothy 3.6 and focus on it there, what, what makes the verse so fear-inspiring is that you or myself could fall into the judgment passed on the devil if you give in to his temptation to make a smoke. This is the most prophetic thing that has ever been said by a high-ranking official of Watchtower ever. You, too, could get the same judgment as the devil if you are consumed with pride. Mr. Morris, you were consumed with pride. You thought that God was using you as a mouthpiece to speak to the entire world. You had that level of air, the level of arrogance that made you think it's okay to change the words in the Bible to fit your vision of it. What you think that God meant to say, we need to change the words in the Bible so it says that. You know, what were the original texts trying to convey? What was going on there? Doesn't matter. We know what God was thinking, and therefore we can change the Bible to make it fit with our narrative. That was the level of arrogance he had. And look what happened. It's it's so wild to hear this and funny. Like, I, I've listened to this little sequence. Sorry, it was a little choppy. I had to cut because I, I don't know if it was delirium or he knew he was about to get axed or something and that's why he's talking about this maybe he's actually saying this as a message to other members of the governing body and maybe it's like his farewell like he knows this is going to be the last thing that he gets out there and then they ended up cutting it anyway but maybe he was behind the scenes saying hey we need to stop like changing the words in the bible you know making all of these weird assertions and you know, putting things there that just don't exist maybe we need to temper our excitement that god is using us as spokespersons and have a little bit of nuance and the rest of the governing body said get the hell out of here you can you can go sign this nda we'll make sure you're taken care of but no we don't want you among our ranks but it, it is so 
wild to hear him talk about being so consumed with pride that you get a judgment from God because it is exactly, and I, I'm not a believer myself, so maybe I'm not the most qualified to really speak on, but when I close my eyes, and again, I'm not a believer, but I can close my eyes and put those goggles back on. When I close my eyes and I think, what is the most arrogant, prideful thing you could do as a Christian, as a full believing Christian, that would be to insert yourself in God's message, to change the words of the Bible, to misinterpret things in the Bible. And that's exactly what the governing body has done. So hearing him speak about this in a talk that is going to go down in history as the last talk, the last public talk of Tony Morris, it's so fantastic it's great like the the script wrote itself here and i'm here for it. and what a warning verse 18 of proverbs 16 pride is before a crash and a haughty spirit before stumbling so pride is before a crash so satan crashed because of his pride he was made to smoke haughty just wrapped in smoke and Jehovah gave him the judgment of eternal death. Uh, he'll be abyssed for a thousand years and then the judgment of eternal death. And he has to deal with that every day. And uh, not going to change somebody like him because he's wrapped in smoke. He allowed ambition to consume him. Yes, we gain insight on what made the devil smoke. And he'd like the rest of us to smoke arrogant. He pitted himself against the almighty Jehovah God. Say. If you were in the auditorium at this moment, I don't think you would connect any of the dots. But when this speech was given, I genuinely wonder if he was giving this talking about the pride and the ambition of the other members of the governing body. If this was some sort of denunciation, if this was his way of calling them out publicly, and maybe after all of the memes and all of the craziness, Tony Morris being the worst governing body member, the most judgmental, the most prideful, the most haughty, what if, in fact, he was one of the true believers? Wouldn't that be a plot twist? He was one of the true believers, and the other people on the governing body, the Garrett Loches, the Sam Hurds, the David Splains, the, the Stephen Letts, the Mark Sandersons, the Jeffrey Jacksons, what if they, and he knew that they didn't believe it as much as him or believed it differently, and they were like twisting the narrative to try and spin it in their own way, and he was trying his best to be completely authentic. Like, hey guys, Bible clearly says no one knows the day or the hour. Maybe we should stop saying we are in the last part of the last part of the last days because the Bible clearly says nobody knows. So why are we saying that we do know? It doesn't make any sense. Maybe he was in 6 a.m. Wednesday morning at the governing body meeting trying to temper their doomsday narrative, and he got blasted for it. Wouldn't that be so fascinating to know? I'm just, I'm so curious. What happened to Tony Morris? I want to talk to him so badly. It would be, it would be, I hate this word because it's so overused, 2008. Epic. It would be so epic to talk to Tony Morris and not just have to sit here and speculate, but... By the sounds of it, with my personal perception, it sounds to me as if he is delivering a judgmental message to other members, other high-ranking officials within Watchtower. Let me know if you guys get that same sense or vibe, but when I watch this, that is the sense that I am getting. He desired worship, and we know he desired worship because notice here in Matthew Chapter 4, and you'll remember this. This is all well-known. 
the account here when the devil's tempting Jesus and he's getting to the final one here and you can see why he's after worship here. It's very obvious. Matthew chapter 4 and we'll read verses 8 through 10. Again, the devil took him along to an unusually high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you if you fall down and do an act of worship to me. Well, Jesus' quick response said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written, It is Jehovah your God you must worship. And it is to him alone you must render sacred service. So here's the account. We just get a, a glimpse of what actually happened. Uh, apparently showed him some sort of way by means of a vision. All the kingdoms of the world, all the glory. Uh, and it was very real, the experience. So that's in the what power he has and don't need to delve deep into that. But notice his arrogance. All these things in the kingdoms, I'll give them to you. Just do an act of worship. He didn't say continuous worship. One act. Say, one act, and I'll give you all of this. Say, well, I am going to do another video when I have some more time. I just wanted to get this one out here. But I do want to do another video and maybe like look at some of the things Tony Morris has said and compare it. Because my, my brain is spinning right now. Is this in some sort of indictment of the other members of the governing body? Is this an indictment of the people that voted him out? And he was trying to send a message because he knew what was happening. And he's calling them prideful, arrogant. They are just act asking for one act of worship. Because in my personal opinion there had been a significant change in the tone of Watchtower videos in how they were asking for money in a much bolder way, in how they were highlighting the governing body so much more than they did in the past. While that was a actual elder talk, so much more. <laughs> I even slip into it sometimes, but they are highlighting their own importance so much more that maybe, just maybe, this is his way of going out without a whimper, but going out with a megaphone. And that's why they ended up scrapping it. Because ima just imagine that this was still in the May JW Broadcasting, and then he gets kicked out of the governing body. What would it look like? What would the optics be on that? He's talking about not being prideful, not demanding worship, how you are literally satanic if you're doing these things, and then he gets kicked out. That would look a lot different because we've seen a shift in my personal perception of the self-importance of the higher members of the governing body, of the governing body helpers, and this, that, and the third. So, I don't know. I find this really interesting. And I hope that we get a few more developments going forward in the future. Because I would be fascinated to know if this was his way of protesting his own exit. Now, you can see he's wrapped in smoke when we have all this other knowledge of Scripture. Uh, you know, if you were a son of God... Uh, he, he brings up in these tests. I, he knows that uh, Christ Jesus was the firstborn of all creation. Now, I, I, I'm, you're just so consumed with ambition, you put that out of your mind. If you're a son of God, this is the only begotten son of God, and you're going to try to tempt him to worship you. Uh, you talk about arrogance, see, puffed up with pride. He really apparently thought maybe the temptation's going to work. So he couldn't see himself or Jesus clearly because of his beclouded and stupid state of mind. Now, I know he's not going to appreciate 
my morning worship. Uh, <laughs> the governing body's already being targeted like never before by this wicked one, so that's the way it is. We stand by Jehovah's side. The governing body is already being targeted like never before by this wicked one. I don't know how else to read that other than there is satanic influence within the governing body. Right? Is, is That's my interpretation of it. You might have a different perception or whatever, and that's totally fine because we don't have to see the world the same way in order to be friends. But, whoa! The governing body is being targeted by, like never before, by Satan. Is he saying that there is some sort of satanic influence the whole flow of this talking about the pride and the arrogance and being wrapped in the smoke and the haughtiness and focusing on jesus because something i've become more and more aware of as i do more watchtower videos is they really focus on the old testament god and now i'm curious if Tony Morris was one of the ones that would focus on Jesus more. Because in this talk, he's talking more about Jesus, focusing on Jesus' words. What would Jesus do? His temperament, his personality, how he responded to things. Yet, Watchtower in general focuses on that Old Testament God that used to kill children for no reason. So, I, I don't know. It, this is wild to me, but... The laughter in the audience, and then you can see he goes off script because he gets the laugh. It's the same thing with every Watchtower speaker. Once they get the laugh, they're like, <laughs> and they go a little bit more, and they start speaking and just firing from the hip. And does he say this after he gets the laugh because he's emboldened and he feels like this is his time to say, yeah, and the governing body, they're being targeted by Satan more than ever before. So two new governing body members were appointed. And this is after that. Two new governing body members are appointed and he's saying they're being targeted more than ever. Could this be a sign that there was friction and tension within the governing body and that's the real reason that he got voted out? I don't know, but boy howdy, this is an absolute banger of a talk. And we recognize... We worship Jehovah, the true God, period. So all of us, including our sisters, got to beware of the devil trying to make us smoke or be wrapped in pride. Uh, we don't want to allow personal pride to take us down that path that Satan took. <sighs> just as I thought, you know, maybe Tony wasn't that bad. He just has to slip in the old misogyny including our sisters. I mean, we, we, no one would think that women are real people, right? So we have to make sure we throw that caveat in there. And everyone, including our sisters. It's, it's so crazy. It's so wild. He, he, he was on a good roll, but man, that, was, that one was pretty rough. Like, women are an afterthought. They <laughs> make up whatever percentage of the population like it's just they're not an afterthought like now even people including our sisters can be wrapped up in pride oh ridiculous anyway uh that's going to be it for this video thank you so much for joining me if you're still around don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel i am going to be doing a more in-depth analysis of maybe this talk and how it compares to previous things that Tony Morris has said and the general direction of the governing body going forward. I am still doing all the convention stuff, so a lot to go through, but uh, we'll make it happen. Uh, yeah, anyway, with all that being said, stay safe, be kind, don't forget to smile.